configurations of electrons. And we also talked about valence electrons, which are in the outer shell. Now, electrons are really important. Why they get all their unit is because the electrons are responsible for the chemical reactivity. And when a compound reacts, we're losing or gaining electrons. So I know in the beginning we said we were going to pretend everything's neutral. Well, that time is over, and now we need to talk about what happens if it's not neutral. So also, so at the top, ions. We defined it before, and we're going to talk a lot more about it now. So normally you have, so if it's neutral, okay, remember, if something is neutral, that meant, well, everything else we were talking about, you had the number of protons, which are positive, equals the number of negative electrons. That made it neutral. So what happens then, we now have to talk about when something has lost or gained an electron, because remember, you can't change protons. If you change protons, you change the element. And the electrons we're talking about are the valence electrons. You can't lose what we call inner shell. So these are the outer shell, or your valence electrons. Those are the ones you're going to lose or gain. Add another de definition, and hopefully it kind of makes sense then. Ionization, well, that's just the process then of when that atom either gains or loses. Because next unit, we're going to talk about ionization energy, hence the energy needed to make these ions, to create an ion. So let's look at our two different kinds of ions. Now, this is where you have to think about it. We need you to think because it's sometimes a little bit backwards at first. So the ions, when you lose electrons, okay, you have to think about what's left behind. So if you lose negative electrons, you still have the same number of protons. So therefore, it's going to be a positive charge. Okay, metals, this happens to metals. Metals, 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 metals are positive. Did I say it enough? I, I know I didn't. Metals are positive. Okay, remember on your periodic table, we have our stair step. On the right hand side, everything to the left are metals. Even the metalloids, even the metalloids. So everything here are going to be positives. Everything to the right are non metals. So sodium. Norm normally, sodium has a positive 10 in here, and there's 10 little negative electrons. We could write where they all are. 1s2, 2s2. We're going to write some Okay, so let's look. Sodium. Sodium, atomic number 11. So that means that there's 11 positive protons in the nucleus. Again, we're not going to be able to write this to um, scale. That also means there's 11 electrons. Now we know two. 1s2, 2s2, then it's going to end up at a 3s. So we know it normally has 11 electrons and 11 protons. What this is saying is going to lose one electron. So instead of having 11, it now has 10 electrons when it lost. So look at, now there's 11 positives and 10 negatives. So overall, it has a positive charge. Calcium is normally sitting over there with 20 positives and 20 negatives. This is then it's going to lose two electrons. So when it loses two, it's now going to have 20 protons, which are positive, but only 18 electrons. So therefore, it's going to have a positive two charge. So the charge matches up with how many electrons it is losing. OK, so we call these positive ions are known as cations. Cations are positive. What do cats have? Cats have paws. Cats have paws, right? So therefore, cations are positive. Um, another way I think of it, I see this. See that? That's a plus sign in the cation. Cations are positive. Whatever it takes, you need to know that a cation is a positive. What else do you need to know? Metals form cations because metals are what? Metals are always positive. 
Okay, so then what do non-metals do? Non-metals, then on everything to the right of the staircase, are going to gain electrons. So you get a negative ion when you all of a sudden are gaining electrons. So now we have fluorine. Now look at on the arrow. We're going to start looking at our arrow. Think of this almost like an equal sign. This is say a normal fluorine is going to take in or gain electrons on the left side of the arrow and it's going to make a negative ion or a fluoride. Okay, make a note here. Nonmetals, their name changes. So the name changes when you make it an ion. The name changes to end in I-D-E. So neutral, it's fluorine. When it's a compound, it's not a compound, excuse me, excuse me, when it is a ion, it's called fluoride. So this is sulfur, and it's going to gain two electrons to form sulfide which means it's sulfur with a negative 2 charge. So normally, fluorine is sitting over there with 9 positive protons in its nucleus, 9 electrons, but this is saying it's going to gain 1, so instead of having 9, it's going to have 10 electrons. So it's going to have one more negative electron than positive, so that's why it's a negative ion. Okay, these are called anions. So therefore, non-metals, everything to the right of the staircase, make anions. Why does this happen? Well, let's look at its configuration and what it happens. And we're only going to look at the main groups. That means group 1 and 2, and then you skip over 13 through 18. We're going to skip the transitions, which is the D block. We're going to skip the D block for a while. So when I'm talking main group, remember that's the S and P. Well, remember we looked at the noble gas configurations, and we talked about the last S, and not the noble gas, but the valence electrons. We talked about the last S and P. Okay, so let's look at these configurations. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1, that's normal sodium. So when it's an ion, it's going to form 1s2, 2s2. It's going to lose one electron. That's gone. Now look at this. This is like the configuration of neon. That is stable. All noble gases are stable. I call these noble gas wannabes. They want to be stable like the noble gases are. Okay, look at calcium. Look at where calcium ends. Calcium is sitting here with a 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2. This is its valence electrons. 4s2, it has two valence electrons. It's going to lose its valence electrons, giving it a stable noble gas configuration. It's full now. This is stable when it's, all the shells are full. Okay, aluminum. Here are aluminum's valence electrons. It's going to lose its valence electrons to form, again, it's going to be a configuration like neon that is stable. So, metals lose valence electrons because pretty you're going to have to predict the charge. How can you predict the charge? Because you know how many valence electrons it has by where it is on the periodic table. That's how you're going to know. Okay, well what about nonmetals then? Well nonmetals gain, they want to gain to have that stable, stable noble gas configuration. So they're going to have to gain however many it takes to reach the noble gas. Okay, these are all noble gas wannabes. They want to be stable like the noble gas. So here's fluorine. Okay, here is fluorine is in group 17, has seven valence. It needs to gain one more. So it adds one more valence electron, and now it has the stable noble gas configuration of neon. Sulfur. Here's its valence electrons. It has two plus four. It has six valence electrons. So it needs to gain two to have the stable noble gas configuration. Nitrogen. Last, S and P's are its valence electrons. So there's its valence electrons. So it has five. 
it wants to have the 8, so it's going to gain 3, and that's why it forms a negative 3 charge. This is why everything in the group all have the same charge, because they all have the same valence configuration. So look at on your chart. We have this, looking at this, and again, your stair step is running just about here. So that's why on over here we have the plus or minus. Above, it's going to be the negative fours. Below would be the positive fours. Okay, these would be negative threes, and we're going to realize that these can actually make a positive five underneath here. And these can also be, this is aluminum, it's going to be a plus three. These are going to be plus threes. They're going to realize that some of these down here actually change also, but we'll talk about that when we start writing the formulas. But we know we know these won't change. Everything in group one is always a plus one. Everything in group two always a plus two. Okay, make sure when we look, noble gases are zero. Zero, because they have a, already have that stable configuration. That's why they're a zero, because they do not want to lose or gain electrons. If it was me, I'd be writing these numbers probably on top of your periodic table because pretty soon we need to use those numbers and we're going to learn why they start combining and why it's going to take one sodium to react with one chlorine, but it's going to take two chlorines to react with one calcium when we start writing our formulas. So we will see you on our next day.